everyone knows here on this channel, we talk about the beautiful golden age of Hollywood because we all like to look back, don't we? And it's fascinating when you look back at people who you've admired for many years, and in my case, been lucky enough to meet, have a chat with, etc., and then find that their life is set to become something of a big screen outing. We've seen it more recently with 70s icons like Freddie Mercury and Queen with Bohemian Rhapsody, Rocket Man with Sir Elton John. They're big at the box office because, you know, people still remember them with great affection. I think it's more importantly, though, they love the music, don't they? That's what it's truly about. What I find fascinating about this latest topic is the fact that I'm trying to wonder exactly where the audience would be. He was a heartthrob of the 1950s, who also became a US pop star and got to the Billboard charts at number one. For a period, he was apparently going to rival none other than the brilliant Elvis Presley. We kind of know how that worked out. But do you remember this man? That's right. Tab Hunter, Hollywood's golden boy who appeared in many, many movies. But as he openly admitted to me, not many people could kind of remember the movies because simply he decided, or the studio decided, to trade on his looks. Tony Curtis, a good friend of mine, told me that they were all signed up to the same studio around about the same time. There were quite a lot of them. Rock Hudson, Tony Curtis, Tab Hunter, Fabian came along a little bit later on. And they were all young, basically, as he pointed out, cheap. So the studios liked them, and basically the teenage fans of that particular era all rushed to the box office to see them. Now it looks set to be that Tab Hunter's life, as I say, who shot to number one with what? That's right, Young Love, which he told me he basically did in two takes. A funny story also that he recounted, which I found amazing, was he'd barely only known the song a short period when he was booked on the much highly anticipated Ed Sullivan show to sing it live. Can you imagine? In front of millions of people. He said he was so nervous that he didn't realise or think he could in fact get the words out. Worse than that, they said he was going to become the biggest thing ever and as he stood in front of the microphone and the music started, he did have doubts himself. Tab had a very checkered career. Obviously, he enjoyed great success in the late 50s, right through to the early 60s, sort of fell out of favour, came back with cult movies in the 80s with John Walters and, of course, the drag queen pop star Divine. That's how he really did come back into the, shall we say, public conscious. And then, of course, a couple of years ago, he decided to release his tell-all documentary, Tab Hunter Confidential. But now they're going to focus on the earlier part of his career while breaking through into Hollywood. As Tab himself openly said, he never truly really set out to become an actor. It was put to him, told him how much money he could make and how his good looks could make him, and more importantly, his studio, a lot of money. So he went along with it. But as he also pointed out, nobody in that particular era really came out of it mega rich. What they came out of it with was, of course, fame. And then it was up to them to learn how to use it. Now, as I say, the movie is set to go into production later this year and hopefully hit the big screens or possibly a streaming giant at some point in the latter part of this year. But the bigger thing I was wondering was this. Tab Hunter... Is he still big enough now to pull in a certain audience back into the box office in the cinemas? Or do you now simply see him as someone that you might watch as a TV movie or indeed stream an event? Interesting to note, isn't it? For many, of course, of a generation, he was the icon of the movies, as so many were. But as Tony Curtis pointed out to me, when you think about it, there were very few of us that went on to become solid actors. Tony naturally was talking about himself. Whereas Tab was trading in on his looks, Tony, he told me, decided to trade in on the fact that he wanted to be known simply as a good actor. Tab Hunter, as I say, goes into production in the later part of this year. But as ever, I'd love to know what you think to this particular story in the comments below. Did you like Tab? Did you go and see his movies? Or do you think perhaps it's maybe missed the mark in this particular climate of entertainment? Neil Sean in the very heart of London.